saw this guy's 2023 NFL all breakout team defense, Bucky Brooks scout. I like Bucky Brooks a lot. He's one of these analysts, former played at UNC Chapel Hill. Um, and so he played in the league to super smart guys. One of those guys that they always talk about, like this analyst can become a GM or at least they used to, his name was floating around in those circles. Maybe, maybe that guy who used to cover the NFL draft that went and became Las Vegas GM screwed it up for these types of guys. That white guy, uh, who was he? He's the one that drafted uh, Elon Feral or whatever. Mayock. Mayock. Yeah, yeah. Mike Mayock. Mayock. Mike Mayock. Maybe he ruined it for people like Bucky Brooks. But uh, Bucky Brooks, I always like his, uh, I like a lot of his takes. He said this as he talked about players that he thinks can, that on the defensive side that could break out and make some noise. He listed two Carolina Panthers and J.C. Horn, Derek Brown. Derek Brown, I've been a. De- I hate every time I say this because I'm like, oh, I've been saying this, I've been saying this, because then it feels like I'm like trying to convince you guys that my opinions matter. I was never down on Derek Brown, though. Like, even, I mean, a lot of people found it easy to dump on him when Matt Rule threw him under the bus. Right. Didn't start him that game. And they were like, well, he's a great player, but he needs to learn how to practice and take his notes better or whatever the hell he was saying. Derek Brown has played in every game since he was drafted. He plays a position that is unsexy. And he's a guy that was bigger than Russell Oak. He's bigger than Russell Okung was. Mm. It's not a sexy look. But it's an important position on the team. He's been an important addition to the team. The team has only gotten better since we drafted Derek Brown. In fact, I would argue that Derek Brown has probably made a bigger, not probably, has made a bigger difference to this team than J.C. Horn as at any point but jc horn has been a very good player for this defense when he's been available he said today i can't help bone breaks um bucky brooks interested in this defense jc horn Derek brown what do you guys are you guys how do you feel about jc horn and Derek brown you guys pick your poison who you want to talk about i mean i'm happy with talking about jc horn i mean it's been um, a question of uh, availability, and and I know that's the 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 problem. Um, he's he played just a what three or four games his rookie season, and then he he was it wasn't even that he got he got hurt a few multiple times last year um, as well. So I mean that injury plague aspect to his career is a real conversation that we have. To bad have. luck. I mean, it might be bad luck, but I mean, how many players have that same bad luck? And we we call them injury prone too. He right? I mean, a, he got his injury in that Houston game. Do you remember on that turf mm-hmm. non-contact? Yeah. There was a couple of people that got hurt in that game. Right. That um, was a game. I really think that I did. We I think we won that game. Actually, we started three and zero with Sam Darnold, and then we lost on the road next right. to. Um, Dallas. Oh, I remember I took so much heat on the podcast because I came out and said we didn't deserve to win the game. We didn't play well, and somehow we pulled it out at the end, and people were mad, and I was like, this is suspect, and then we went and got blown out in Dallas. But that he had that foot break. But then last year, CK, he got a friendly fire injury or something. Mm. There were a couple. It was his wrist, I think, this time, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, I know that it stinks because, like, this shit is half happenstance. Right. You know, it's like you can get in a car accident and be a good driver. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's like, is these, and that's what I think he's saying. And I don't know how to say someone is injury prone truly a fair term? Is it loaded? It's never fair. Right. I don't think it's an ever fair. I don't think that I think if somebody somebody might just have really bad luck and that in a, it by itself is not a fair situation. But right. by the that other piece, fair. there there is a part of this that comes into play where you have to start talking about the impact that that's going to have to their ability to play well. Right. It's not even that they're just going to they're easily going to be injured necessarily. But, you know, there's there's sometimes I mean, you talk about what happened with Thomas Davis. I mean, the fact that he got another opportunity 
is a is an outlier. It's not something that happens often. Mm-hmm. So he got an opportunity when when he shouldn't normally say get an opportunity. Um, so I mean, to me, I don't think that there's um, anything necessarily wrong with saying injury prone, but I do understand your point is to say that it's not it's not a fair thing to just say that somebody's injury prone. Because of you just have you bad know, luck, I think. I right, think right. you're right. Is this is you're not injury prone as much as just bad luck as that we're hitting somebody. I think white chocolate. I think Kev said in the chat, Greg. He said uh, bone bone breaks are different than ligaments. So trying to find a silver lining in this, I'll tell you one thing: is I accidentally and with terribly bad luck broke my thumb a few years ago. No, in 2020, um, and I had to get surgery. I had to get screws put in. They put five. I mean, just your first of all, your thumb turns out to be a motherfucking important digit on your thumb. Yeah, right. Um, they did a great job with all the surgery. Is incredible. The all of that, and I healed pretty well. But my shit still is not the same. Yeah. Great. Sorry, it never will be the same. Like, I mean, it's I think Tommy John surgery is the only way people are improved right now or fake tits. <laughs> I agree. The only surgeries. What other oh. surgeries improve you? Kidney trans Ooh, just what? for the sake of it? Is it you mean just for the sake of it? Uh, I don't right, know. Like where you get a surgery where it's like you come out actually better. I, th- Most I don't of think the there's... time it's like if you have a knee surgery or back surgery, it might help M- move a tumor. Out, it might help your problem, but you're never better than when you were actually healthy. That makes sense. Okay, yeah, yeah, I got you. I mean, until uh, you well, start doing, yeah. uh, until you start doing the augmented, uh, uh, you know, cr- including technology into your body, there's not really a surgery that's going to make you better uh, like than you were prior. You. Well, right. fake tits, fake tits will enhance you. No, I'm uh, just. Have just, you ever touched just in the eye of the beholder, though? Not necessarily. No. You don't. You're not necessarily you physically don't healthier when you, get, when you get. You you remove, and I could be wrong, but you also impact the ability to do the things that you were yeah. naturally supposed to be created for, which is breastfeeding. So that's a fair yeah, point. But yeah. what if you don't want to have babies no more? And half the people don't want to breastfeed anyway after a month. Yeah. Well, it. I'll there's some uh, there's some information that I would uh, recommend people look up saying that if you breastfeed for the first twelve months of at least the first twelve months, your your children are thirty seven more likely to have high test scores. And twenty five percent less likely yeah. to spell English. <laughs> I hope that is corollary, but hey, I mean, uh, yeah, there, there's, there's, there's a, there's a debate on whether that's causation or correlation. I'm, I'm sure it does have something to do. It does affect sense. I guess you know what? Who does it improve it for? Right? Is it might improve it for the partner, not mm. the person the sensation who knows i've never even touched one i don't know i've never (laughs) i do it's on my bucket list somebody put in here why did we get our tonsils taken out back in the day i actually you know what i found thank you for helping me with my own logic i had sinus surgery like for sinu chronic sinusitis when i got health insurance like when i got a job and got health insurance i finally started like go to the dentist and fucking take preventative care shit and I got my shit roto rootered. It helped mm. my life. It did. Yeah. It improved the quality of my life. I was like, wait a second. I'm supposed to be able to breathe like this? Never yeah. knew that. 29 years into my life, 30 years into my life, didn't know that y'all smelled like shit. <laughs> well, hey, uh, y- y'all took the, we talked about JC Horn with this, but I do want to talk about Derek Brown too, because while I think JC Horn, I agree, is poised for a breakout as long as he doesn't get injured, y'all, Derek Brown is looking good. Like I'm looking at his stats. Dudes hasn't missed a game. I told him. Mm-hmm. He's, he started every game except for one it. since he's played. He's gone up in combo sacks, solo tackles, assists, tackles for losses, quarterback hits. Every season he goes up and increases interceptions, every single stat. Yeah, uh, I think this this might be a breakout year for him. I don't know why people have been hard on him. To be honest, like is I it's guess not flashy. It, he's well, not it's flashy because position. he's a tackle. I mean, yeah, here's the thing: is people that people are hard are, on him, CK, are supposed to know football. Half the time, these people are the guys that supposedly know all this shit, and they're like, well, the the problem is, is that they see defensive tackle and they look across the board and they look at defensive tackles and then they start to compare. 
Well, the problem is you can't compare Derek Brown to Aaron Donald. I'm sorry, right. you cannot do that. Right. They are two different people, two different complete playing styles. Aaron Donald is not I going to be positions too, honestly. But, right. Kind of. But Aaron, look at how dominant Aaron Donald can be if you can have a guy that's good at that position. Sorry to interrupt you. Go ahead, take No, no, I'm just. I agree. I think that there's so many things that go into this. I think Brown, uh, the fact that he got his fifth year option picked up should speak volumes to the fact that Chase Young didn't get his his uh, fifth year option picked up. Like, let's be real about some things. Derek Brown is a dog, and he deserves to have the uh, the, the the contract. Hopefully, that's going to be negotiated here soon. It's not the sexy of the two um, positions when we say the interior tackles. You got the usually they like to put a big boy in like the star. Right. Mm -hmm. But uh, here's some trivia for you: Who posted more sacks than any other interior lineman in Panthers history? Thirty-two and a half. Hmm. So it would it be a it's a D tackle? A disruptive mm. sack monster. Anybody? Anybody? Bueller? What, mm, Defensive mm. tackle more like Aaron Donald, less like, uh, in fact, here's your hint, less like star, more like. Uh, not star. Who's the other guy that drafted with him? Um, K1 love. Short. K1 yeah. Short, yeah. K1. I want to get him on the podcast. Uh, Sideshow Rob had a good guess, Chris Jenkins. You know what? Is he was arguably the best defensive tackle in Panther history. The problem, not the problem, he went on and had a very, very good career too with the Jets. Um, so if he would have continued to play, you know, K1 was great, but his moment was shorter than I wanted it to be. You know, is like no he really balled out from 13. 14, 15, right. and was pretty good in the 16. But I, like after 2016, disappear. Well, I think, I think that people... speaks to the exact thing we're talking about yeah. is that it, the reason that Derek Brown doesn't look like he's doing anything better is because he's not had that running guy, the guy to run beside him that's going to be able to take the attention off of him on the interior. Um, I oh, think that, clearly, clearly he yeah. doesn't, he didn't have his K, he didn't have his star Latou. Well, he didn't have his K1 short, actually. Mm -hmm. He didn't have his K1 short. He didn't have really, he's had nobody at tackle. I mean, name uh, the, the, uh, I mean, I'm sure you can name the tackles, but I mean, tell oh, me no, who's, no, who's even, tell me who would be a starter on any other team on our, uh, that started, you know, a tackle beside him. Fair no, point. nobody would be a starter. Can you name one? I got one in my head, and he's just a fan favorite rather than good. Morgan Fox? No, I think he plays more D. I think he can play both. I would call him a defensive end. Okay. The McCall guy. McCall, mm, McCall. He's yeah. big. <laughs> he kind of looks like uh, he reminds me of Vince Wilfork a little bit. Yeah. 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 Um, but, yeah, like, I agree. Uh, I think that that's more just – uh, fan favorite than really producing at a high level. Yeah, um, like, because we've had guys like we always have been trying to find this six round dude or fourth. You know, we've had never these, really invested them. Yeah, like, I mean, who is it? We've got a couple of them that they have one like kind of good season their rookie year. They've been a six round pick. I mean, I would say this is probably the first year that they've invested at a pretty, you know, I mean, I know Shy Tuttle isn't like a a needle mover, but he was at least a starter on another team. Um, Morgan Fox, I think, was technically a tackle, though, um, in our defense. I could be wrong. I feel like I remember him being a tackle. Um, who was it that they got last year? He's still on the team, I think, right? Um, there's a tackle. Two. We've every year we get a rookie that's in the six. We got one from Baylor one right. one time. Um, Matt Ioannidis, that's the other one. Yeah, that was thing about from last uh, year. That's still more. I feel like. Both of these, uh, both of those kind of are like they might be able to play some tackle, right. but are more kind of hold on, uh, defensive tackle. Hold on, and there's a couple of guys, help me out. They are six round Green. picks, like we used to have. Hold on, I'll get you, I'll get you right here. Uh, purple, bring it on. Nose tackle. No. Do we not have them anymore? Who is it? Help me out. Six round pick from Baylor. Uh, right now, our nose tackles are Shy Tuttle, Marquan McCall, Joe 
Penasini. Don't know him. Bravion Roy. That's who it is. Mm, yep. Bravion Roy was uh, kind of somebody that, I mean, and uh, this is the guy that I hate. I mean, I liked him, but we always try to find these discount players there. Yeah, they, they just haven't worked out yet. And the other part of this is we might be able to, it, we might be able to uh, attest that to the fact that even though Phil Snow, you know, on paper looked like he was running a really good defense, still was running such a, uh, it was so volatile. It wouldn't, there was no consistency on our defense. One week we would be run stuffing and doing an incredible job there. And then the next week we'd let the, them set franchise records on us running the ball. Um, it felt fugazi at times. Yeah. It's, so, I mean, I think it felt like a blind, you know, what is it? A blind clock or no blind horse. Yeah, broke, finds broke, water broke. is sometimes or something like that. All anyway. the pieces are there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, so, can, can I ask real quick, Coney? Cause that actually brings up a good question for me with the comment you just made a moment ago about like uh, a, a player that you're just, uh, how did you, how did you put it? Um, a, th a throwaway pick. Like you don't expect to have a starter whenever you like at what positions on the field. Do you feel like you could just waste on a guy you don't ever expect to start? Like, are I there certain ones you can't do that with? The ones, no. I think you try to find some big fat boys. I think they're good ones to do. Okay. Like guards are good. I mean, uh, like, like if you're looking for a diamond in the back rough, in the back in, like you can't get super skill. It's really hard, I think, to nail the super skill positions, like right, um, like a corner or a wide receiver you can get a backup quarterback late yeah well, might I mean, be looking at a guys running like back in fourth fifth or sixth Tom but Brady. that's where i don't like right. having a ton of picks is like is having three fifth round picks even good no but here's the way i look at it is i think that you can invest a kind of throwaway player into any position on the team it's just that when I draft this guy in the sixth round, if he ends up being a diamond in the rough, awesome. But I'm not pacing my future on him doing that. Sure. And I think that's where it kind of goes. I think you base one, two, maybe even round three on guys who are going to be a start. One and two, definitely guys who are going to be starters and play for this team. Everybody else you're just kind of throwing the dice at. You know, and if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But I feel like for me, that's positionless as far as what you would waste a pick like that on. And it's, it's not wasting a pick. You never know. All those find positions I don't care about. Yeah. Defensive tackle, guard. Yeah, what if you find the guy there? Yeah, that's why yeah. you do it with those. Yeah. That's why you take those later flyers and you hope that they turn out to be somebody, you know, is like all of a sudden the receiver going to be. I mean, maybe sometimes you can find these diamonds in the rough, but. As they brought that up, I asked fans today. I think I'm going to start doing this more on the day of the show. So look on our Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, Carolina Cat Chronicles, uh, Instagram, wherever we try to put everything, where I try to find a way to get some energy to post on all these damn 